Hello everybody, welcome to the next episode in the series of Introduction to JetBrains MPS. This time we are going to talk about the editor. So while the previous episodes that covered structure, constraints and behavior were focused on the abstract syntax of languages, so how to define the nodes or the concepts out of which uh, models can be built, the editor that we'll look into today serves the purpose of displaying the ASD on the screen. Typically in textual notation, but in MPS you're not restricted to textual notations, you can use tables, diagrams, or any other notations that you can think of. So the editor, ultimately, is a big swing panel, and in that panel you've got cells, components, labels, or you can add any other swing component that will form a way to edit the AST that sits behind the scenes and that could be visualized in the Node Explorer. As an example, let's look at the editor definition for an if statement in, in the robot cutter language. So this is an if statement. Clearly it has a condition, it has a body, and it also has an alternative branch following after the else keyword. So we'll look at the definition of this, of this editor that makes an if statement look like this on the screen. So first we go to the concept definition. The concept has an alias if, has a condition which is logical expression and has two command lists, true branch and false branch. So this is the abstract syntax. Now the editor, so the editor definition defines how these properties, children and references that are defined in the structure should be laid out on the screen. And if we open the inspector window, we can quickly check the type of the cell that we're looking at. So if is a constant cell, so it represents text that you can't modify. If we go back here, you can't really change if to something else by typing, unless you define so. So by default, this is an unchangeable text that's displayed on the screen, just like the, the, the word do here, or these end words here. Each cell can be further customized by defining style here. So by default, there's no style, and the the constant will be displayed in plain black font. But you can ch change all colors and font styles in here. One by one, you can customize all the properties, or you can choose from the predefined styles, like keyword, for example. So now if will be displayed as keywords should be displayed. And you can define these preset styles for your language. Or you can reuse the ones defined by someone else. And you can customize various things. If we look at the do constant cell, it's a constant again, you see that this one is sometimes followed by a new line break, sometimes it isn't. So there's a query specified here that says if the true branch is not empty, I want a new line break. But if it is empty, I don't want a new line break. Right, so if we go back here, if I delete this step, now notice my cursor is next to do, and I can type here, but as soon as there is a command in the body, now it is it appears on a new line, and this is all thanks to this query here. So when you specify a value, you can typically pick from uh, several values. If it's a boolean property, you can say true, false, or a query, and the query returns true or false. But can take into account the node itself. We also specify a matching label. We give it a name block. So when you put a cursor on do, oh, then all other cells that are marked with this matching label block will be highlighted in the editor so it's to kind of visually visually highlight delimiters that belong to the same block of code so both do and end have the same matching label if we go to end you see a matching label block so that's why the editor knows that once you put a cursor on one of them the other one should be highlighted as well so these were constant cell there are many types of cells that you can add Typically when you hit an enter you get an empty cell, you hit control space and now you can pick 
a cell you want. There are cells that represent properties, children, references, and then many other types of cells that you can pick from. For example, an if cell. It is a cell that has two options, two alternatives. So in our case we can either show foo or bar depending on a condition that we define here. No dog. Now we may check the if uh, the so maybe if the, if the else branch is empty, then I want to show foo. If it's false, I want to show bar. So it's some sort of alternative way of displaying things. Or you might use a read-only model access cell in which you display directly a string that you return from a code, or you could display an editor component. Editor components are reusable pieces of editor definitions that you can define yourself and then reuse in editors. Also, notice this question mark here. It's, it's an indication that the cell that follows has optional visibility. So the show if property is set, here's a function that returns true and false depending on whether or not this cell should be shown. For we are ensuring that the false branch is only visible when there are some commands in there. So if it's not empty it's shown, if it's empty it's not shown. So if we remove turn left here it becomes empty and so it disappears. It's no longer shown. Now the trick to show it again if you type else that's something for actions. That's something we'll look at in the next episode. But notice now it's not empty, there's an empty line in, in here. An empty line is also a command. It, it can also be made part, made part of the model. And also notice that the whole editor is wrapped in some special cell. So it's a collection of cells. It can contain several cells and also has a layout. There are several types of layout. Indent is the most universal one, but you can use horizontal and vertical layouts which are also frequently used, and then there are some others which might be useful in certain uh, scenarios. And this collection cell with this layout, they take care of positioning all the components on the screen and adapting to changing the size of the screen and changing the, the, the font size and so on. Okay, so this is editor definition. You define an editor for a certain concept. Now the other options. You can create editor components. Editor components are reusable parts of editor definition. So you can define a component. You may override an already existing component you apply to certain concepts, if statement in our case, and now we define the component just the way we would define an editor. So first we set a collection with a layout, indent layout in our case, and now we add some cells, some constant cell, and perhaps a cell for the condition child, and, in a, and then we can include that component in editor definitions. So we could here, at the end, we could add my component here. So the default behavior of the editor is pretty intuitive. You type stuff, if you type characters, the characters are being added into the cells. If you hit delete or backspace, characters are being deleted. Sometimes you want special behavior. For example, when positioned on a knot, which prepends some logical expression, when you hit backspace you want not to be deleted and now you only have the original condition. For this to happen you have to add a special handler to the editor for not so that when you hit delete it will remove not from the AST. So here's the editor definition for not. So it prepends a not constant cell and then the original logical expression. 
and not itself has an action map defined. Action map, if we go to the definition, it's an action map applicable to not and it has two handlers for delete and for backspace. When you hit delete or backspace when positioned on the not cell, then the code here is executed. In our case, it will replace the node, the not expression, with uh, the original child of the node. And there are more options that you can configure on cells. They differ slightly between different types of cells. Just to go through the few most frequently used ones, in cell ID you could specify an identifier, a unique identifier that you would like to use for this cell so that you can refer to it from other parts of the editor. You could define key maps. In key maps you define handlers to individual keys that the user types on the keyboard while positioned within the cell. You can customize the completion menu for uh, the cell so when the user hits control space in um, in uh, this cell what items should be in the menu of course MPS will add many items by default but if you are not happy with the default you can override it here the focus policy could be configured here whether the cell attracts focus and under which condition it does so when this node appears on the screen, where should the focus go, which cell should get the focus, the cursor. Now optional visibility of the cell, we've covered that already. So in the editor aspect you can create concept editors that we've covered already, editor components which are reusable components that you can then use in ed concept editors, we've covered that as well. You can define action maps and key maps which contain the handlers to either high-level ID actions or low-level keys that the user types. Then you might define cell menus, so parts of completion menu that then you can assign to individual cells and reuse them. Context hints that allow you to define multiple editors for the same concept. You just have to distinguish these editors by hints and then style sheets in which you define predefined set of styles and then these you can then apply to your uh, cells plus there are some more options but these are not so important and not so frequently used now to give you more insight into how editors are defined in MPS I'll define this if statement editor from scratch, maybe not completely, but at least I'll start. So typically when you define a new editor or, or an editor component, you have to provide some sort of layout first. Unless you want to add a single cell, you have to wrap those in collections, or you could surround with an indent collection afterwards as an afterthought as well. So typically you start with uh, square bracket and minus to get a collection cell with indent layout and now in here you create uh, the other cells. That, so the first cell should say if and I want it to make a constant so I want a co constant cell that contains the word if I would like to style it as a keyword and uh, yeah let's say that's what I want at the moment now here I would like to say the uh, show the condition condition if we go to definition is uh, a logical expression so it has it has an editor of its own so we don't care about editing condition it takes care of its editing itself now after condition we would like to say do and again we would like to make it a keyword and now after do we would like to we would like to get the body of true branch now we would like this to be on the new line so we we should add a new line break after do we can either use the intention or we could manually insert the property down here now after true branch is shown we would like to sh show end 
now and we would also it would also like this to be on a new line so we put it on a new line and we want true to be indented so we added indent we set the property indent layout indent to true okay and this way we would continue we, we would place the components on the screen so that they mimic the final layout of the final editor that you'll be able to use in your code Okay, that's all about the editor. In the next episode, we will build on this knowledge and we'll further polish and improve the editor by defining actions. Goodbye.